Hello, my name is Rainer Gerhardt. I'm the main author of uh, ArcSyslog, and I want to give you a quick glimpse at modern Syslog D architecture. Uh, it's important to know that while this applies to ArcSyslog, uh, the core ideas given in this chart are probably found among uh, several Syslog demons. Uh, the important thing that's often misunderstood is that uh, people tend to think that a syslog daemon just takes the input message received by, uh, for example, the uh, syslog API on Linux or over a network, takes the string that's contained in this message, uh, uh, applies some uh, routing on it, and unmodified uh, writes that string to the output. This, however, is not the case. If you look at a modern syslog daemon, uh, we have three core areas. Uh, that is the input part, seen over here, uh, uh, come shortly to the details, and it's the output part, shown over here. Uh, and then, right in the middle, there is some uh, logic that handles messages. The input side obviously receives input messages and does so via uh, various channels. For example, on Linux, we uh, have uh, devlog as a primary channel for local uh, emitted messages. We have the network like TCP or UDP. Uh, and in the future, in our system, we'll also have audit. I'm right now working on that. Uh, then on the output part, we have the typical file output like varlog, what many people think syslog is. It's uh, not just that. Uh, we have uh, databases, uh, maybe in the future the journal database supported, uh, but also relational databases or document-based databases like MongoDB, which is currently another thing I'm working on. And of course, we have remote systems uh, where we send messages to via TCP, UDP, and a variety of several other protocols. Uh, then the core part in between here uh, actually processes the message and ties these inputs and these outputs together. Uh, so the input receives a message, for example, via the log socket. Then the first thing that the core processor does uh, is it passes this message down into a set of key uh, value or name value pairs. Uh, and once this is done, the rest of the engine operates on these name value pairs. It does no longer operate on the uh, original string. That's important to know. Uh, so it means that the original string, while still available, uh, is not that important in further processing. Actually, it's usually not used. Uh, rules and filters uh, describe what to do uh, with the messages as they are received. The important thing again here is that uh, this does not operate on the original message, but rather on the name value pair structure that has been created by the parsers. And uh, in case I didn't mention, there are various parsers, and uh, inside the uh, engine, there are also ways to modify and normalize messages that came in by the path. So we may end up with uh, pretty normalized uh, uh, name value pair structure uh, inside uh, the core, for for example, uh, if we have CE enhanced syslog. Uh, then when it comes to creating an output, for example, writing to uh, the log files, uh, and for meta is employed. And that formatter uh, takes the template definitions from rsyslog.com, uh, and take the name value pairs that are method specific, uh, and based on the name value pair and the template, create the actual output string. So it's important to know that the output string is created right here in the formatter in the final stage just before calling the output plugin. Uh, it is not necessarily and usually not uh, the same method string that was received on the input side. Uh, one infamous example of this logic going on is the timestamp. For example, uh, if you receive via the network or via devlog, uh, Arthur's log is able to obtain high precision timestamp, uh, which contains a millisecond resolution. Uh, Parsers uh, use that timestamp and populate a, a high precision uh, name value pair with that timestamp, which then is used inside rules and fillers. Uh, and then for matter, in most distributions, is instructed to take that uh, high precision timestamp and format it down to a low precision one. Uh, just to retain compatibility. Uh, all distributions uh, except Gantu uh, seem to do that now. It's kind of weird that we have this uh, high precision time spent for quite some years, uh, but using the formatting, uh, it's uh, taken down to low precision ta time zone less time spent when written to log files. Uh, you, you can easily see that if you look at the database, for example, our MySQL schema, uh, and there you see the high precision time spent. So, Different formatters have different output capabilities. 
let me sum this up a little bit. Uh, modern Syslog D architecture uh, has no direct relationship between input and output strings, uh, and as such is able to emulate uh, things not seen uh, and to take new formats uh, seen on the input uh, and process them in new ways while still retaining compatibility, uh, but at the same uh, time providing the ability to extend the system for new technology. Yeah, that was what I wanted to convey. Uh, thank you very much for your time and hope to uh, see you again.